Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Ask the Nanny. Tonight, I have Jenny Thompson with me, and she's from the safety pin. And in case you are wondering what safety pin is, we're going to tell you. Uh, but first, I need to say, Happy Nanny Recognition Week. Yay! It's our week. Yes. And As the Nanny, of course, is still celebrating my birthday. As the Nanny is three uh, on September the 1st. And so we're still give, doing giveaways. So if you find me in your DMs, in your uh, your uh, messenger asking for your address, I have some special giveaways. So you ready? Now, I'm going to let Jenny tell her about, tell you about herself. I said that wrong. I'm sorry. I'm going to let her tell you about herself while I share this with my groups. And if you're watching, please share this video with all the nanny groups that you can because we have a nanny special going on. And I know you don't want to miss this. I'm so serious. Please share, 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 share to as many nanny groups as you can. But don't get kicked off or out of the boat. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. So, Jenny, please tell us all about you and what you do. Or rather, uh, oh, tell us about you. Introduce yourself and give us a fun fact. And then I'll come back and start asking questions. Okay. So, my name is Jenny Thompson. And I am the CEO and the founder of Safety Pin. And I know we'll talk more about Safety Pin in a minute. So I will stick to a fun fact, which is um, that my very first job, I was a bailiff in a courthouse in Prince George's County. And I still know the speech to introduce the judge. So it's all rise, the fifth district or in and for the county of Prince George's in the state of Maryland is now in session the Honorable C. Philip Nichols Jr. presiding, you may be seated. And um, I did that when I was in college. Wow. And when I went back to college full time, I saw this girl in a class and she said, oh my God, you look so familiar. And I said, oh, do you live in the dorms? Do you go to the journalism school? And then I kind of rolled my eyes and I said, have you been a speeding ticket in the last year? And she looked at me and she went, oh, you made me spit out my gum. <laughs> <laughs> So there's my fun fact. I was a bailiff and I made a girl, I made a lot of people spit out their gum. You're not allowed to chew gum in court. Wow. Too many people popping gum. <laughs> the judges do not like it. And it's funny because I'm old enough that this was so long ago that women weren't allowed to wear pants in the courtroom. So we had a big wraparound skirt that was one size fits all. Like literally whether you were a size two or a size 26, you were wearing this skirt. Um, and so it was a wrap around skirt that could be on if they needed to wear a skirt into the courtroom. So you had to wrap it around, you I know probably about four or five times. Share this. I was allowed to wear pants because I was a bailiff. Really? Yes. Oh, because you were the bailiff. Okay. Because I wasn't presenting myself to the judge. Maryland is very fine on laws. For those of you that don't know, if you try to get divorced in Maryland, so this is another fun fact, and then we can go on. If you try to get divorced to Maryland, I don't know if it's true anymore, but when I got divorced, which was not that long ago, it was like 10 years ago, um, you have to live separate from your spouse for a year and not have sex. And then you have to have a third party come to court and testify that the two of you have not had sex, even though a third party shouldn't have any idea about that. Okay. I used to live in Maryland. There you go. So you I know. know. Yep. Uh, yeah, so and, I was like, you know, the skirt. I know like that nothing. law very well. <laughs> and yeah. uh, during that that period, that one year period, I moved to, to Georgia. And uh, once I got to Georgia, they said, oh, you only have to live here for six months in, in the county. I was like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Give me crazy. Yeah. Like no contest of board. I literally, two months after we separated, I turned the house over to him, no contest, nothing. It took us two and a half years for the state of Maryland to let us say we weren't married anymore, which is crazy. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a mess. Hello, uh, life of a fantastic professional nanny. Hello, Nance. How are you? Hi, Allison Piper. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you all for uh, tuning in. I know that there are plenty of activities going on and I really appreciate you coming in and um, watching us. Let me see, who do we have on uh, Faith uh, and Melissa and Sarah and Gloria. Thank you guys, for, but thank you nannies for watching. Uh, hi, Patsy. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in. Now, tell us, first yeah. of all, what is safety pin? Okay. Well, first I will tell you, well, I'll tell you what safety pin is. Um, and then I'll tell you why I started a company. That was my safety next question. Pin is, <laughs> safety pin is a, a unique style of background check that we really developed primarily for the gig economy when you're it, it's not necessarily designed for when you're working with one family and you're going to do your due diligence on them and they're going to do it on you it's more designed for when you're taking jobs on the side and you want to be able to let a new family know that you've been screened at a high level and they can trust you without having to share all your private information with people that you are not going to have a long-term relationship necessarily. So it's it's particularly advantageous in the in the babysitting market. And if you know, I know a lot of nannies do side gigs on care.com or Sitter City. And so what we've developed is a way we do a um we do a broader criminal background check. We we look at more area and then we also do this behavioral review. And a nanny that we worked with has said to me, what I love about safety pin is I don't have to compete with people who can't meet this standard. Like this is a standard that people should have to meet to work alone with children. And that's one of the things they like about it. Keep in mind, we're not looking at CPR certifications or, or quality of the relationship. We're really looking at that trust and safety aspect. So we're looking at a criminal history. Um, we look broadly at a financial history. Like if you a lot of, we don't look at your credit score, but we look at um, like if there have been a series of judgments against you, for example, and what we're looking for, we're not if you've had a hardship, we're looking for fraudulent behaviors. So that's that's what we screen for. And then we have this behavioral review where you answer questions and it goes into a scoring algorithm that is built by criminal profilers. Because as you know, you guys may or may not know this because nannies, I don't think really fall into this category, but there are a lot of people who try to work with children because they are not people who should be around children. And they say the word. So, <laughs> well, I used to be on the board of Big Brothers Big Sisters, and we had so many pedophiles that would apply because pedophiles go where children are. And I will share that we had one person who applied for a safety pin who was applying to be a babysitter. He was a 38 year old male, which immediately sets off my flag because there aren't a lot of 38 year old males in childcare. And it turned out that he had two open charges for sexual assault of minors. And um, we were we were happy that we were able to catch it, but because it was older, they were very older open charges. Um, legally, most people aren't allowed to screen that far back, and the only reason we are is because we're dealing directly with the individual. So we're not telling their potential employer, "Hey, look what we found." We're just saying to him, "You can't have a safety pin." Um, yay, Sarah! Thank you for letting us know you have your safety pin. So yes, um, 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 Shannon has one too. And Shannon, and one of the things that we one of the things that we do is we we run this screening for you, and then give you a way to let people know um, that you have passed all these requirements without having to give your private information to them or share a copy of your of your background. And you know, for some people, sharing a copy of your background is not a big deal. One of the things that we know is. If you, depending on what they run, like if you had a drunk driving arrest 12 years ago, that comes up on something. And that's nobody's business anymore but yours. Um, and, you know, we worked with law enforcement professionals to, to determine the algorithm. So we're really focused on trust and safety. And we're also extremely focused on privacy and reputation. 
And one of the things I'll share for the for the women who have already came on and said um, that they have their safety pin, we're working on creating a deliverable for you. I know that some people have said parents still want to see something, and so we're mm-hmm. gonna we're creating a deliverable that you can hand them a PDF, but we'll only give it to you, and then you can decide who to share it with. We don't do international screening right now. Um, you have to be a citizen or a permanent resident of the U.S., but we certainly plan to extend internationally. And part of the reason is obviously the criminal laws and the privacy laws are very different in different places. Mm-hmm. Also, the behavioral review that we do is very nuanced. And the way that we ask the question is very important. So we can't just have it translated. We have to actually hire clinical and forensic psychologists in the native language, even if the native language in another country is English because the vernacular is different. So as we expand, we have to look at the privacy codes, the criminal codes, and we have to hire new psychological professionals as well. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see. Hello to, let me see, Melissa Wright and Marilyn James and Jennifer D and Star West. And let's see. And Carolyn uh, Fier- Fier- you know, I always pronounce her name wrong. Fier- Fier- Okay. Hi, Carolyn. I'm not going to mess up your last name. Like, Thank I'm you for, for joining us tonight. Um, now, you said that you all do a, um, you go back so far because I just mm-hmm. recently had a, a family request on care.com to get my criminal records done. And I don't have a problem with that. But I noticed on that report, I was like, that's not me. I've never lived in this state. Yeah, I've never, uh, I've passed right. through a couple of times. I've never had a ticket in this state. I never had it. I mean, it was clear, yeah. but I'm like, that's not me. So if you find something on your criminal records report, I'm kind of thinking that I need to go to my credit report and make sure that these people are not on my credit report too. So that's smart. So let's let's talk about that, Angela. I'm so glad you brought that up. A lot of people get frustrated that we don't provide a copy of the record. You and I both have very common names, right? You can imagine there are several Jenny Thompsons. Um, for those of you that follow international sports at all, uh, there's a famous soccer player who had an affair with a prostitute named Jenny Thompson. So her name is usually the first one to come up in Google alerts. But, um, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want her record on my record. And yes. when we look at people's criminal records, we frequently get false positives. We frequently get false negatives too. And what I mean by false negatives is it'll show something like, this is my favorite description. Most people, hi, Marilyn. I'm so glad you tuned in also. Um, most people don't understand the phrase something dismissed with prejudice or without prejudice. So I'll just explain it quickly for those of you who don't know. If something is dismissed with prejudice and you don't know what that means, it sounds like it's prejudice against the defendant, right? Like this charge was dismissed, but we think that there's something still there. It's actually the opposite. It means it's dismissed and we think the prosecutor did such a bad job that they are not allowed to bring charges again. So. If you show a parent a record that says dismissed with prejudice, and the average parent's not going to know that, they're going to make a judgment that's the exact opposite of what's true. And so we look very much at false positives, false negatives. We've had people that have drunk driving arrests, for example, where they're um, a junior and their father got a drunk driving arrest and it's showing up on their record. We've also had people accused of fraud for using a dead person's social security number, and it's because somebody typed in the social security number wrong. So all of these things will come up. And what's unique about safety pin is you are the only person we're communicating that with. If we found out that you killed 12 people, we would only say to you, you can't have a safety pin. We would never go back to the person who asked you to apply for a safety pin and let them know what we found. That's not our role. Our role is to assess the answers that you give us and decide if we are going to give you a thumbs up and then continue to review and and screen in an ongoing matter. So you have a live 
in good standing safety pin at all times, but we it's not our job to let the other person know anything that we do or don't find out. And so we take that very seriously. I always say that actually the people that we protect the most are the people that can never be our customers because we've declined them, but we will never share information about them. Well, that's good. I, I guess that's good to know. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> and I say you know, that because um, if you only talk to the customer and you mention, you know, if you kill 12 people, I'm like, uh, well, because if you nanny, kill 12 people, you're probably not out. But yes, if you kill 12 people <laughs> yeah. and we're able to find it, <laughs> to find it, obviously, of like we. We have the same concerns everybody else has, right? We have the concern about safety and trust. And then we have the concern about things that are unfair, that are false convictions, that are unfair prosecutions. And that's why we work with law enforcement. We work with um, defense attorneys. We work with paralegals to review people's records. Everybody gets a free appeal. And again, all the communication is 100% confidential between us and you. And that's it. Um, we have partners that send us applicants and the applicants get declined and we never even say this person was declined we just only send them back the positive approval we're very committed to this and you know i understand the concern on the flip side of it wait if you know something about someone you should reveal that and our feeling is if you ask someone to apply for a safety pin and they don't get one that's a conversation you shift them but it's not our place to manage the reputation issue Right. I, I I see your side of the story and, and that's what's going to keep you pretty much keep you in business, because if something comes up false on my report, like I found something on the other report, it could come up on the safety pin. And I'm like, that's not right. me. That's not mine. Yep. And and it's up to me to figure it out to report it, to get it taken off of my criminal record, to get it taken off of my credit record. I have to go and be defensive, go on the defense and say, this is not me. What can I do to get this corrected? And right. I would rather someone have the corrected version of my criminal mm -hmm. records report than to say, oh, you did this? Really? Yeah. It's not that major, yeah. but still, you did that. So I, um, yeah, it's truly important. We get a to percentage me. match, so it would tell us like your name was the same, but your address wasn't the same. You never lived there, and your birth date is is not the same. So we get a percentage match when we look at that, and then we review it, and we say we don't think this is the same Angela Johnson, and then we would um, reach out to you and say we found this thing in, in Raleigh, North Carolina in 2004. Can you tell us anything about that incident? And if you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about, and we already think it's not you, um, you know it's you. For that very reason, like percentage match is very low and you're not responding that it's you. And we're seeing that there's no other issue, you know, that kind of thing. I do want to take a second and just tell the story of why I started the company because, you know, I love that story. Um, <laughs> and I know some people here have their safety pins and some were at Nanny Palooza, so they've heard it. Yes. But I started the company um, because the pet sitter that I hired faked her own death when she owed me some money back. And um, I had, she was 19 years old. And I, had, I hadn't done a background check on her, but I had gotten her references. I had a copy of her driver's license. And I thought, this is crazy. Like you could just block, you could just say, I'm not gonna pay you. You could block me from your phone. I'm a grown woman. I'm not gonna hunt you down over $150. But to go to the extreme of having your friends commit fraud with you and fake your own death, when, when in fact the other problem was she didn't stay with my dog. So she lied about what she was doing. She put my dogs in danger. She didn't take care of them. Then she faked her. So that's why we built in the behavioral aspect of it. 
because we can tell from that behavioral score if somebody is likely to commit fraud or to victim with another person. Oh my gosh, why commit? I mean, uh, why would you fake a death over one hundred and fifty dollars? I have no idea, and okay. I don't know why I'm other just, people would participate. That with her, just blows my actually, mind. <laughs> when when I started telling the story, so her first name is Sarah, and she lives in Maryland. And when I started telling the story, people would say to me, "I'm not even sure you should her first name." And I would say, "What's she going to do?" like come back from the dead and say that was me. She'd have to admit that she faked her own death over $150 <laughs> or she has to just sit down and shut up. So finally, so. Wow, wow, wow. Do you um, do safety anybody, pins? For safety pin, anybody in the world can, well, sorry, right now anybody in the U.S. can apply for a safety pin. And our beef, not just because we are the company that does it, is that trust is a two-way street. Um, I always remind people, like, you would not want your 17-year-old daughter babysitting at Harvey Weinstein's house. And so we do think that parents should have them and employers should have them. We think Airbnb hosts and guests should have them. Anytime that you're trusting somebody on either side of the transaction, we, um, we feel that way. Right now, our standard is extremely high. We have a single standard, which is, would I let my child alone in a car with this person? As we expand, we do intend to create different levels of safety pins. So, for example, a safety pin delivery driver approval versus a safety mm -hmm. pin nanny approval. Those are two very different levels. But right now, everybody has to meet our nanny standard. Okay. Now, you mentioned that how you all have to hire forensic specialists and all these different things to go. How high does this, is how, I shouldn't say how high, but how secure yeah. is this, is this safety pin? I mean, it sounds like FBI deep to me. Yeah, so the one of our lead advisors is the former chief security officer of health. He was in the Secret Service for 25 years, and he protected the families of four presidents. Um, we also work with the FBI agent who captured Saddam Hussein, and the former lead forensic psychologist from Leavenworth Maximum Security Prison, who's also an FBI hostage negotiator, and two retired members of the NYPD. Um, as well as the head of clinical psychology at one of the Ivy League schools. We're not allowed to say which one because of her contract, but those are the people that we work to build this. We also hired a federal investigator who um, audited every single county in the US to let us know where we had full coverage and where we needed to get deeper background checks. So we take it very seriously. Um, and, uh, I, at the same time, like I said earlier, we understand that there are challenges in the criminal justice system and we know that there are unfair prosecutions or other things that have happened. And so we look at it, if a record gets kicked out for having an offense, we look at it very thoughtfully. We look at the, at the pattern of behavior, we look at the history, we look at when the last offense was, um, other behaviors, and we look at the score on our behavioral at the same time. So we're really looking at, at a 360 degree view of the person, not just a single event. And we're very aware through our law enforcement connections how unfair law enforcement can be to certain populations. And we take that into account when we're making decisions. And in addition, again, everybody gets a free confidential appeal. So if something happened, that we can't see that there was, we had, we've had a couple of people that said, oh, this is on my record, it shouldn't be, I had it expunged. And then they send us their paperwork and when it's expunged and then we know we have to ignore it. And we've had people that we've stopped working with because they'll see a dismissed charge and they'll start thinking, well, it says the person had an illegal weapon, but the charge was dismissed. But that still seems scary. And I'm like, yeah, you're not allowed to do that. If the charge was dismissed, we don't consider it. Like that's not a conviction. We're, we can't work that way. 
Um, and because because of the way we run it, we sometimes think that aren't convictions that shouldn't be on somebody's record. So we're we're very cognizant of that, and that's how we pay attention. However, if we saw a pattern of behavior with five possessions of a deadly weapon and they were all dismissed, we probably would not give the person a safety pin because we would think there's some pattern here that this person's getting away with. Okay. Okay. We have a question. How does a person apply for safety pins and how much do it, does it cost? So you, our website is getasafetypin.com and normally it is um, $4.99 a month. It's a membership because we review people regularly and people can always see that you're still in good standing. So it's normally $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year. And um, I know for people on here who said they got safety pins if they got them at Nanny Palooza, we had a special deal of $3.99 a month or $39.99 a year. And don't upset anybody. Um, but we are going to have, I don't have the link available to share with you right now. I, I'll be able to send it um, and be able to send it to you tomorrow if that's okay. But we are um, giving an introductory offer of an extra $10 off for the annual. So it'd be $29.99 for a year. And there's a $1 application fee. The only caveat to that is if you have lived in New York, there is an additional $95 charge, which I know sounds extraordinary, but that's because New York actually charges $95. We don't mark that up at all, but New York has an extraordinarily high charge for background checks. Okay, okay so um, I put the getthesafetypin.com. I posted that for you. Um, okay. Um, Someone else had a question. Um, Major said, uh, but a nanny can ask an employer for a safety pin. So in other words, can you as a nanny ask your uh, your family to get a safety pin so that you know that you're working for a yeah. uh, reputable, I mean, because Absolutely. nannies Absolutely. go on interviews and I always tell nannies to be extra careful, be safe. Uh, about and let somebody know where you're going. Give them the address, to where you're going uh, when yes. you go on interviews, especially when you're going into someone's home. I always give my husband the address, and I tell him, and I, 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 when I get there, if you haven't heard from me in 15 minutes, uh, if call me, and if that family is any, yeah. you know, family that I want to work with then I won't mind answering my phone and I will let them know I need to get this yeah. and uh, yeah. have a safe word because when he calls yeah. and I give him the safe word, he knows I'm okay. Uh, a thousand percent. Uh, you know, uh, it's just, there's just too many people in the world that you can't trust. And um, I, the it's really unfortunate, but yes, Anybody can apply for a safety pin. If they go to getasafetypin.com, it says apply. You know, it's, it's very simple. Um, the whole application takes five to seven minutes. And there's absolutely no reason for anybody to, you know, the other thing is if, Angela, to your point, if they feel comfortable asking you, you should absolutely feel comfortable asking them. Your safety is just as important as theirs and the safety of their children. And if they want to be able to trust you, you have to be able to trust them. And by the way, again, like it's not just does this person have a criminal record? I'm I'm sure. So I told the story at Nanny Palooza that I was working with a woman who um, we, she does not work for Safety Pin. I want to be clear. She was another founder in a startup, and she said, "Oh, I wish I had had you when my kids were little. I went through sixteen nannies." And I was like, "Well, that was you." Like there's, <laughs> that, that's not a nanny problem. That's a mommy problem. And I don't have kids, but even, and I've never been a nanny, but I know that. So behavior traits also not, they not only indicate that the person's dangerous, they indicate like that they have these, these levels of so sociopathy. I hate to use the phrase sociopathy and psychopathy because people think it's like, you know, shower killing your, your mother or something, but it's, 
it's these behaviors that make you so such and so narcissistic that you don't care how you impact the other person. And so somebody who can't get a safety pin might not have a criminal record. They might not have done anything criminally, but they may have these behaviors that mean you will be miserable working for them or they will, for example, not pay you. They'll just decide, you know, I don't like the way you talk to my kid, so I'm just not paying you or whatever it is. And so, you know, some of these behaviors, it's interesting also I'll share with you, a lot of people worry about what we do because they think it's going to be discrimination against people that are lower income or certain races. And I would say, actually, rich white men are the greatest level of psychopaths and sociopaths. So like, we're, <laughs> we're actually leveling the playing field. They just don't have criminal records because they can afford the attorneys and they don't get arrested. But we're actually like leveling the playing field more than we're making it work. And, um, and so, you know, I think it's, it's valuable for nannies and sitters to ask the families to get them. And actually right now, like each individual has to apply for one and, and, and they always will, right? Like a Harvey Weinstein's wife is not responsible for anything that he did. She's a, a separate person, but we are looking, we're going to be able to group them by family in the future. So you'll, so everybody will be screened, but you'll be able to see that these people have a safety pin. And for example, I know we'll, some people are creating like pandemic pods now. And if you had six families you were working for and you wanted everybody screened, you could go, we're building it so that you could go to a place and see they all have active safety pins or that the in-home parents all have active safety pins, for example. Okay. Uh, Mitch says, just a comment. I had two interviews with high profile people who had criminal records. Absolutely. There, you know, I'm certainly not saying that they don't have criminal records. I'm just saying that when people tell us that they think that we're being unfair, we point out, you know, be, because criminal records do tend to impact lower income and minority people more. Our point is, no, we're actually filling the gap by including this behavioral view. And this does not disadvantage lower income or minority people. If anything, it disadvantages wealthy white men. So, yeah. and I can't put disadvantages in quotes enough. <laughs> okay, Major says, thank you so much for doing this. And um, Shannon says, I invested my time and I'm proud of myself for getting my safety pin. Well, I also wanna let you know something that we are so excited about. Um, we are launching a browser extension, kind of like Honey, if any of you guys use Honey for, um, if any of you use Honey for savings where you're shopping online and it comes up and it's like, ooh, you have Honey coins. So we're launching a browser extension and if you're listed on any websites anywhere, if you're listed on care.com or Sitter City or Craigslist anywhere, once people plug in the browser extension, we'll actually have a separate pop-up window that will feature you if you're in their zip code range. And so it will, you know, if there are 20 sitters listed, we'll pull out the two or three that have safety pins and highlight you in a separate window and link right back to your profile on that site. So you can still book through sittercity or care.com, but people will be able to see that you have a safety pin that you've been screened at a higher level and they'll be able to link right through to you and, and cut down competition significantly. And that should be launched in two to three weeks. Yeah, we're so excited about that. We're, we've always been looking for ways to help our, our sitters and our, our members book more jobs. That is the goal. Because a lot of us are looking for ways just that just edge me yeah. out over. Not to say that the rest of them are not good, good nannies, but no. I need all the little help that I can get. Um, yeah. uh, I think you answered Shannon's question. And the competition Shannon's is question. fierce now. Yes, um, it is. Shannon, I, it should be available in two to three weeks. In two to three weeks. Um, we'll keep you guys posted. If you have a safety pin, you'll get an email from us with the details. And if you haven't already, um, if you have a safety pin already and you haven't downloaded the profile picture safety pin, badge we have a new badge that you can actually upload any profile picture you want onto our site and it incorporates 
to your safety pin ID, and then you can actually download that and use it as your profile picture on any site. So it'll it'll profile your safety pin now, even before the extension is ready, and it really kind of jumps out. It's like a thicker blue circle with your safety pin ID. Um, so we're doing the browser extension. Um, we have the um, we have the new profile badge, and we're creating a deliverable for you. All of those things to provide more value to our members. And Shannon, to answer your question, does your safety pin expire? It's on an ongoing membership. As long as you choose to keep your membership, you it doesn't expire. We continue to screen you and keep you in good standing. If there's ever you know an issue with a credit card, we'll let you know. Um, and then also the other thing is that if you got a special discount price, that is your price for life. Your price will never go up. So um, we, you know, we know that that babysitters and nannies have so much disposable income that they just want to throw away. It's also one of the things for those of you that do work on Care.com and Sitter City, for example. We know that they can charge you for the upgraded background check. Some of them are requiring you to get a basic check now, and there's nothing we can do to change that. Um, over time, we're hoping to plug in with them and say, hey, look, this person has a safety pin. Don't charge them for their membership fee because you don't have to screen them. But for right now, you can at least avoid the additional costs of the upgraded membership screenings and let families know you have your safety pin. This is what's covered. We have a page. We search 450 million criminal records for every single search. We search beyond your county. We give a broader screening. We do the behavior review. And that is all detailed um, on our website and through a simple link when somebody goes to verify your safety pin. Oh, all that. Now, tell us again, uh, for those who just came in, because um, we have several people that are now watching. Uh, hello, Sarah. And uh, there was somebody else that came in. And it, Elish. I want to say that's what your name is. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. And hello, Rena. How are you? Uh, someone says it just popping in to say, this is great. Uh, I can't wait to watch the replay. Got to run. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, 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 she's an agency. <laughs> now you get to say it. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. But but yeah, she. What about nanny agency owners? Can they get the um, the 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 special prices too for their their nannies? They can. For agency owners, we don't offer the monthly. We only, for any business, we only offer the annual. We don't offer the monthly. The monthly is just a way for sitters to have an easier way to keep it in their budget. Um, you know, we figure for 4 or $5 a month, it's worth it. Um, I don't think I share this yet, but we have data that babysitters who display a safety pin on their profile book twice as many jobs. So for $5 a month, if you book in you know, one extra hour, it has paid for itself every month. Um, mm -hmm. And so the monthly is only available to individuals. But if you have any agency, we do honor the the same pricing um, and we'll give you the discount. We just only allow the annual. Okay. So it is better in my calculations, and I'm a numbers person, if I'm paying $5 okay. a month times 12 months, that's $60. But yeah. the special for National Nanny Recognition Week. Y'all yeah, better jump on it. How much is a special again? It's $29.99 for a year. Okay, so that's half. It's 50%, yeah, it's half. And again, if you book twice as many jobs, if you even book one and a half times as many jobs, right? If you're charging $15 an hour, two hours, you pay for the whole year. <laughs> Sorry, is that better? Um, I'm sorry, I I think it's my headset. Um, I just I can't take off my headset because you'll hear my dog chewing her bone like crazy. Um, 
Yeah. So it's twenty nine ninety nine per year. Yeah, plus the application fee, which is only a dollar unless you have to to New York. And again, like we wish we didn't have to charge the New York fee. That is a Governor Cuomo issue. It's, they charge ninety five dollars for every background check. We think it's insane. Um, yeah. we don't charge any extra for anything else. Like there are people that we've screened in 20 or 30 different counties. There's not a single extra charge for that. It's only for New York, which I know is unfortunate. And hopefully if you're a nanny in New York, you can get the family to pay that for you. Um, we also do have a way that a family can buy your safety pin for you. They can sign up for a guest account and go get under, get someone a pin and they can pay for it and send it to you. So that's yeah. also an option for nannies. So, all of you all who are offering uh, prizes for National Nanny Recognition Week, you can get a guest account and make it a nice present for National Nanny Recognition Week. I'm just saying. That. I'm just that. saying. You can also do it for a guy that um, a guy that wants to date you. He, you can do it for him. Make him get a safety pin. I almost went on a date with somebody who had a very significant criminal record, and I was lucky that I was able to check. Um, and I mean, like domestic violence, stalking, and possession of child pornography. Significant criminal record. Um, so yeah, yes. you can use it for anything. The application process is the same. The special price. Um, I. Angela, I can I will send you a link tomorrow if you can distribute it to the people watching. I am sitting here. Uh, I am sitting here tagging all of my single friends. Come on, you need to watch this. Yeah, if you go to actually, if you go to our page on Facebook, Safety Pin Technologies on Facebook, you'll see a picture of the criminal record of the guy I almost went on a date with. I posted it to warn my friends, and. Um, and none of these sites do any criminal screening, and for good reason. Like, if somebody had a theft of $100 five years ago, you know, how are they going to keep that person off of a site? And, sh and they shouldn't. But, like, somebody who's stalking and committing domestic violence and having possession of child pornography and weapons, he probably shouldn't be on a site. Um, so, yeah, I, I will send you the special link. I don't want anyone to go sign up their new night, which you'll never hear me say again in the history of time, but I want to make sure that we, I, New York is super insane, I know, and, um, <laughs> and so uh, I want to make sure that you don't sign up, that you only sign up through the special link that we send to make sure you follow up with Angela, or if, um, if Angela if you don't have a way to stay in touch with Angela or she doesn't have something to send you, you can email us at um, info at getasafetypin.com and we'll make sure we send you the link. Just say that you were on Angela's nanny show. Ask nanny and we will make sure you get the special link. Info at getasafetypin.com getasafetypin.com yeah, info at getasafetypin.com and my team will get you the link. You can also always um, message through Facebook, which is Safety Pin Technologies, or Instagram, we're at Get a Safety Pin. Come in any of those ways, mention Ask the Nanny, and send you the link. I will send it to Angela in the morning. I apologize, this is 100% my fault. I think it's very important to take responsibility for your mistakes. I forgot not to have them, send, um, so I, I just don't have it in time for tonight. But we will have it for you in the morning. And you can message us, um, and we will honor that price for a full week since it's National Nanny Recognition Week. So you have seven days to sign up at that price. Tell all your friends, tell all your friends, tell all your friends, get their safety pins for half price. Half price. You know we love a good sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll let you in on a little secret. We won't know if they're nannies or not. So if your friends are dating or or dog walking or home improvement specialists and they want it, you can still send them the same link. And mm -hmm. you know it's it's good for a week. We're, if the, if you want to get your parents have the parents screened, 
for one week, we're not going to track who's coming in on the link. If you're like, no, no, this is nannies only, I respect that too. I'm just letting you know, however you choose to use it. We, our goal is to make everything safer for everybody, especially like these, these quick booking jobs. And if we can keep you guys safer and keep families and children safer, that is all we care about. Yes. And not going out of business, making it too cheap. I will admit, like, that's the New York problem <laughs> where, you know, yeah. we just can't afford to include New York in pricing. Um, but beyond that, we really just want to make the internet and the world a little bit safer or a lot safer. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so sorry, New York people. I, I do apologize. But New Jersey. Me too. Hello. No, New Jersey's all good. Yeah. No. New I mean, Jersey. It, it's uh, really, on these but countries. the truth is, for those, and this is a really important point to make, for those of you that ever have anybody get a backpack, if they tell you they can get a $10 background check in 24 hours, that's not true. If, first of all, if they've ever lived in New York, it's not screening New York. It's not screening Massachusetts. It's not, there are 17 states that don't um, participate in the National Criminal Database. So if somebody says like, oh, I can get you checked instantly for $10, make sure you know where that's being checked and where that person has lived or the data is completely irrelevant. If somebody's lived in New York their whole life and somebody tells you they're getting you a $10, 24-hour background check, they're not screening in New York at all. Um, yes, if you move, so if you move, actually, I'll tell you the, the New York charge is only charged when you apply. It's not part of the annual membership. You pay it once apply and we never charge you it again. If you move to another state, your membership stays exactly the same. We just screen you based on our, where our data tells us to screen you. So if you lived in New York and you moved to New Jersey or Pennsylvania or, you know, stay on the East Coast, do you still get charged? Do you get charged by where you currently live or where you have lived in the past? So that's one of the secrets of safety. Pit. Not secret, like I can't tell you. A place work when they do background checks is they check where you live now. One of the things about people with criminal records is they move a lot and they know how the system works. So they check their background checks regularly. What we do for the first screening is we check everywhere that you've lived since you turned 18. So if you lived in New York and then you moved to New Jersey, we would still be charging you that $95 because we would be paying it. We wouldn't charge it again if you. So it's the first time application fee. Um, but yeah, that's because we screen everywhere you could have a criminal record. Okay. So if you have ever lived in New York, hear me clearly. If you have ever lived in New York, even if you don't live in New York now, it's yeah. still going to automatically charge you $95 because you have lived in New York, but it's only a one-time charge. Right, but let I me say also we just get on New York and change their laws. <laughs> well, I, I think say. you should. So, honestly, I think it's really dangerous because I think a lot of people choose not to run it for that reason. Um, here's the other thing I'll share with you: we realize what a significant hit that is for people. So there is a pop-up that says, "Before you give us your, you know, before you hit submit, it says." If we have to screen in New York, if you've lived there or worked there since you turned 18, it's actually not if you've worked there since you turned 18, it's if you've lived there since you turned 18 and you work there now, but the language is a little murky. We are going to charge you $95. Do you want to continue? And if you say yes, you'll still get an email that says, okay, we've checked and we think we're going to have to charge you $95 for New York. And we delay New York background checks for 24 hours so people can write to us and say, hey, no, I never lived in New York. That's wrong. Um, and, and I should share this with you. There's this very strange situation that happens with some people where for some reason their cell phones are registered to addresses in New York that are not theirs. We think it's like a corporate cell phone thing or something. And so that gives the person time to say to us, wait a second, I lived in New York. And we go and we can check the address. And then we can pause the New York screening. So we actually don't charge them. So 
So you have time to say, oh, no, 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 that's not right. And you have the opportunity to abandon if you don't want to accept the charge. We don't want to surprise anybody with a $95 charge. We understand how shocking that is, especially when you thought it was going to be $1. Yeah, because I know when I when I filled out mine and it said a big pop up, if you lived in New York, I said, oh, I don't have to worry about this. Yeah. because I've never I've never even been to New York. So uh, that's the uh, I was like, OK, I have no problems. I said, like, uh-uh, y'all not going to charge me. I've never lived there. I haven't even I yeah. haven't even visited. <laughs> I want to. Which is a mistake. But, uh, you should. It's, the, it's still the best city in the world, but wait till the restaurants and the museums are open. But um, yeah. 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 A, a lot of, a lot we, of places. You know, we take the financial piece of it very seriously. We understand it's a hit. We wish we could change that. Like that is certainly something once we get big enough, we will lobby again. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now we just, you know, we certainly don't see it changing. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mary. You can tell Mar family. <laughs> tell what? I'm sorry. I said, tell the family they have to pay it. Uh, yeah. Tell the family, let the family pay for it. Cause, cause when I go for an interview and you want to do a background check on me, have at it. I have nothing to hide, but guess what? You're going to pay for it. Yeah. You want me? Yeah. That's part of my benefits package. You're going to pay exactly. for it. Um, but uh, hello, Mary Rodriguez and Kara Landon and Yolanda Arthur. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for watching. Now, any last uh, comments, warnings, uh, anything that you need to tell us? We will have by eight minutes. I just want everyone to make sure that they get the special link. So either get it from Angela tomorrow, or like I said, you can um, you can contact us through Instagram or Facebook. Safety Pin Technologies on Facebook at Get a Safety Pin on Instagram. Also, obviously, we'd love if you followed us on Instagram and liked us on Facebook. And yes. uh, we're very excited about the browser extension. Those of you that have a safety pin will get an email from us explaining exactly how it's going to work and encouraging you to, to share it with people so they can um, download it and it's going to work on any browser. And it's essentially going to help people find the safest people on any site, whether that's a, a babysitting site, Airbnb, Craigslist, anywhere. So we, you know, we appreciate your support. It means a lot to me that you guys who have your safety pins are so excited about it and, and seeing that feedback is great. Also, if you have feedback for us, that info at safety pin, sorry, info at getasafetypin.com, um, please send us your feedback to that address too. We want to make this product work for you guys, and that's why we're creating the PDF deliverable, because we heard from a lot of people, a family, you know, this family doesn't trust just your badge. They don't, they don't know what to do with just your badge. So we're creating that so you can share it if you choose to. Um, we are so focused on personal privacy. We know how messy background checks can be and how bad the record keeping can be. And we don't want any false positives to impact. Any, um, we're creating this list that will show everywhere we screened and that you met all of our requirements, but it won't, it still won't be a physical copy of the official background check from our vendors. And uh, we're very excited about being able to provide that. And we love your feedback once that's available. And anything else you guys want from us, please let us know. Info at getasafetypin.com. Okay. And I just put in there, uh, hold on. It's going to pop up in just a second. Well, all the way down at the bottom. Hold on. There we go. Getasafetypin.com. Uh, uh, you can get a safety pin for only $29.99 no. a year, $1. Uh, I think we have one last question. Is there a way for people to track you through all those socials and selling platforms, see postings, et cetera? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, what I will say Are is because... Because ahead, we're so focused on privacy, 
Yeah, sorry, because we're so focused on privacy. The only thing we share, somebody can come verify your safety pin. It'll show the profile picture that you've uploaded, and it will show your first name, city, and state. Very cautious about not including too much information. We are adding an option for you to upload your social links. So if a family wants to be able to check your social, you can have them do that through safety pin in, in the future. We don't have that functionality live yet. Everything I'm discussing should be live within a month. So, uh, Mish, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Uh, she said, with the safety pin. She said, you, it, can, they, can they search you through social media and everywhere no. with the safety pin? Okay. No. We're, and they also, if you apply for a safety pin and you get declined for any reason, nobody can come to our website and search to see if you applied and didn't get one. It's it's extremely limited information that we give out for the very purpose of protecting you and your information. So you can post your safety pin anywhere you want. If you want to post it on your Facebook profile, on your LinkedIn, you can post it anywhere. But but somebody can't track, and we don't we don't we don't track you around either. So we're not putting. You know, we're not doing like what Facebook does, where we follow you everywhere you go on the internet and, and track that. We're really only interested in giving you this credential that you can use anywhere you choose. And yes, that was an excellent point. So the discounted pricing is for one week. We'll, we'll give you know, a full week from early tomorrow morning. So um, through next Thursday, and it's twenty nine ninety nine a year locked in plus one dollar application fee with the extra ninety five dollar charge for new york um if required okay got it got it got it got it got it got it now it is now eight o'clock hey carrie thanks for joining us um it is now eight o'clock it's probably nine o'clock your time <laughs> okay. so thank you all for joining us tonight um, as, um, trying to get this hot, this off of here. Um, so I will have the link tomorrow morning. I will post it on this, um, on this live so that you can get it. I will also post it on my Instagram page and on my personal page so that all nannies, because I know I have more friends on my personal page than people who actually like Ask the Nanny. Uh, so I will post it in all the places so that you can be sure to get it. Uh, you can share with your friends. It's only $29.99 plus $1 application fee per year. And it never that price never expires. Am I right? The price never goes up. The special deal ne will price expire. Never, in I one mean, week. The price never. The price never goes up. Okay. Right. So, mm -hmm. also, um, I'm want it. It's only good for one week. One that special week. price is good for one week. The fifty percent savings is good for one week. Yeah. So. Just be sure I will put an expiration date on there. I'll be sure to Perfect. do that next Thursday morning. Uh, what is today? The 23rd? Probably do so, Thursday through midnight. The 30th Thursday through midnight. Through midnight. Through midnight. Yeah. So today is the 23rd. Yeah. Next Wednesday is the 30th. So October the 1st at midnight. Oh, sorry. The 1st. Yes. 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 I was doing seven days. But yeah, we'll do eight days, of course, since. We don't no, uh, well, yes, yes. tomorrow's the 20th. Let's see, today is the 23rd. Yes. If we get it tomorrow, that's right. the 24th. So You're right, yeah, so it'll be the first. I was saying I was doing seven days from today. Sorry, I don't want to confuse anybody. Yeah, October 1st at midnight. Okay, <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure I get it right before we leave so I know what to put on there. Okay. Um, yeah. Mitch, uh, Mitch says, thank you, Angela and Jenny. Definitely going to... Uh, to do it and share it. And Marilyn says, thank you, Jenny and Angela, for doing this show. I'll be applying tomorrow. Blessing to you both. Thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies. Thank and you all so much. 
Shannon says, I have a photograph in my bio about having my safety pin. I feel like it definitely helps me to stand out. Yes, 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 Shannon. We need everything that we can get yes. to stand out. So, Shannon, I'll give you a quick little tip, which is if you go to getasafetypin.com forward slash what dash we dash screen, it'll show the full list. There's also a, a link. Um, if you go to your safety pin page, it'll um, to verify, it'll show the link. But if you go to that page, you'll be able to show people everything that we screen and all the requirements that you've met if you want to include that a link to that in your bio. So they all know everything. I have been screened for this, 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 this. I didn't just go for the basic uh, driver's license and did I have a criminal record in this town. I right. went through exactly. the whole United States and yep. and they dug down up into the nitty gritty, you know, all up under my fingernails <laughs> and in my toenails and, and looked all in my ears and everything, you know. Yeah, they got they got yep. real personal with my background check. So, yeah, um, but I'll it send is you very that link easy. Tomorrow also, so you can include that also. For those of you who are watching and you want to know, oh, is this is hard thing? It is very easy. It takes about five minutes. The hard, the longest thing it took me to do was to find my driver's license in my purse. That was so seriously the longest part of the application. I'm like, where are my license? And they were, it was flipped backwards, so, so I did couldn't find it. And when I flipped my purse around, I was like, oh, there it is. So that was the longest process of this application process for me. Uh, it was trying to find my driver's license. So it's very quick, very simple, very easy to do. It's done online. And like she said, your person, not like every other website that sells your emails and sells your information, that's not going to happen. No. They're not going to be able to track you down by your safety pin, but you will be able to get edge out over the, the your competition. Yeah. Um, and also, um, just really quickly, all the data is encrypted and, and stored securely. It is, um, somebody said, uh, my developer said, it's like we buried your social security number in five different areas under 20 feet of cement. Like they're not, your social is broken up into different digits, stored in different areas, encrypted and hashed. Everything is very, very protected. We are, the, the security is very buttoned up. We, uh, we knew that the company we were building would be a target for hackers because of the type of information. And so we built it like with um, the highest level of cybersecurity and actually our, um, our, the guy who used to work at the White House is also a cybersecurity expert, so he consulted to us on all of that. That sounds like my cut up credit cards. I cut across the numbers, and then I cut between the numbers, and then I cut it down, and it looks like confetti. Yeah. And I put it, I, yep. I, I, I will save it, and I'll throw it in, in everywhere I go. A little bit over here, I, I go to Walmart, a little bit over there, go over here to Ross, go a little bit over there, go over here to Neiman Marcus, yeah. there's a trash can there. You can yeah, never exactly. be too careful. You can never be too I careful. Cut across, so you cut across across your name numbers. and your numbers. You know, we they obviously need some very personal information. We protect it like it's more important to us than our own. And and everybody who comes to work for us has to apply for their safety pin, including the people in the system. So they know like, hey, whatever you do with somebody else's data, you're doing with your own. I take that very, very seriously. Great, great, yeah. great. Thank you thank so you, much, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. everyone. I've, I've loved being with you and answering your questions. I'm so excited to have you guys join the Safety Pin family, and I will get you that code first thing in the morning. Okay. All right. We will see you all on Monday right here, same time, same place. Thank you all for joining us, and please go by uh, the safety pin on Facebook and show Jenny some love. Um, I'm going to post it on the comments uh, because it's just easier to do it from my phone. I'm going to post it on the comments, her, her links on Facebook and on Instagram. So please go by, follow her. Please go by and like her page. 
and uh, by all means subscribe 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 this is a one-time offer and all better yeah, it's for it's for national for national national National, National Nanny 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 Nanny. Nanny. <laughs> my tongue. <laughs> okay, I got it out. So this is a special offer, $29.99. One dollar um, application fee is for the whole year. And if you live in New York, I'm so sorry, but it's gonna be a charge of $95. Not from the safety pin, but from the state of New York. And if you want you have a problem with that, talk to your governments. Yeah. And demand that they lose money on that still because we get a markup that we don't push through. So like it's still we're still not making money on that 95. We're losing money. Like that's how wow. we feel about it. Yeah. Well. All right, thank you so so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you all next time. See you on Monday.